welcome to my channel i hope you watch this video up to the very end today's lesson is analysis on a load not taken by robert thrust uh, as you remember the other day i gave you an assignment uh, which was made with one question the question here it is what do the two loads symbolize in the first stanza? What is the significance of choosing a load? So the answer is here. What the two loads symbolize, uh, the two loads that the traveler face in his work are symbolic of the choices that we have to make in our life. The journey or a simple work itself is a metaphor for great journey of life whether one should adopt the way of spiritualism or materialism in this poem the poet after prolonged thoughts he decides to take the lord less traveled accepting its challenges and uncertainties now before we go far let me go back to the poem two lords diverged in a yellow wood and sorry, I could not travel both and be one traveler. Long I stood and looked down one as far as I could to where it bent in undergrowth. Then it took the other as just as fair and having perhaps the better cream because it was glassy and went the way. Though, as for that the passing there had worn them really lily about the same and above that morning equal lay in the leaves no step had trodden back oh i keep the first for another day yet knowing how way leads on to way i doubted if i should ever come back i shall be telling this with a sigh somewhere edge and edge hence two lords diverged in woods and i took the one less traveled by and that has made all the difference now by looking to line to line two lord diverged in yellow wood the speaker walking through the forest whose leaves have turned yellow and comes to fork in the road the second one says and so can only travel both and be one traveler now the speaker is regretting that he can't travel both roads since he is just one person as he was just one person he couldn't travel those roads at once since he was just one person long i stood and looked down as far as i could now as he stands at the fork in the road for a long time and try to see where one the path led to he was examining the load to where it bent in the undergrowth he can't see very far because the forest is dense and the load is covered in the wood so clearly because the wood the load was cov covered in the uh, the wood anybody cannot see clearly because in the wood there are um, thick trees that cannot allow you to to see clearly for far distance then it took the other as just as fair the speaker examined the load and takes the other path thinking it is just choice which is good a choice to make that was a, a, another word which he didn't know he was just trying his chance and make this choice and having perhaps the better claim because it was glassy and wanted the way now that may even be the better option of the two since it is glassy and looks less used than the other path so now he chose this one which was grass though as for that the passing there had won them real lily about the same the speaker has actually worked on the second lord he thinks that it is a, a that in reality the two lords must have the, uh, have been more or less equally one 
So we know that uh, there were two roads. So now he, he he decided to take the second one instead of the first one. And both that morning equally ray in the leaves no step had trodden back. The speaker recalls that both roads were covered in leaves, which has not yet been turned black by feet of people using those roads. So here again we have seen that he took the one which was less traveled by. So to mean that it was less used. Oh, I kept the first for another day. The speaker now in his mind he decided to take the, the second one and save the second the first one for this another day, for the following day. Yet knowing how way leads to way. I doubt if I should ever come back. However, we see that he contradicted himself with the acknowledgement that in life one Lord leads to another. Then it was like that he will ever actually get a chance to return to that first Lord due to the fact that one Lord leads to another. Okay, we see that again. I shall be telling this with a sigh, somewhere else and hedge hence. The speaker imagined himself in the future retelling the story of how make, he made a decision, how he made his own choice in his lifetime. So now, here, we may say that, he, okay, be, because what I have experienced, because the decision that I have made, I one day I will tell these things that happened to me, the choice I made in the future. With a sigh. Two Lord diverged in the wood, and I took the one less traveled by. Now, looking back about his choice, the speaker said that he had had to make choice between two lords and took the Lord that was less traveled. So one may say that there is understanding of majority and minority once you are going to uh, take a decision. So here, maybe one can say that, okay, instead of following the idea and all the, all the place of majority, you better sit by yourself and make your own decision. Because the decision you take are the one which will shape your uh, which shape your life, which will shape your life, and they are the one which will affect you positive in a positive way or negative way. And that has made all the difference. The speaker is now saying that the Lord he has taken made the difference to mean the Lord he, he has he may he chose to take is the one which shaped him is now the one which made him a person he is today and he is proud of that uh going to poetic device in this poem we look at the structure and the pattern uh, in the structure we have to look at the stanza uh, the stanza is a poetic form of fixed number of rhyme in which poem in this poem in this poem there are four stanza with each stanza having five verses or rhyme. So this one means that once a poet is creating or composing a poem, he might or she may decide to, 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 to make his stanza made of two, three, four, five lines and so forth. So now these five lines in this stanza or in each center of this poem, make it to be called quintain. A quintain is a five-rand stanza. Here, each stanza is quintain such that the first one, the second one, the third one, even the fourth one, are made of five lines each. Now, here, let us see on this structure again. So we see that the first stanza is made of five lines. The second one also is made of five lines that make it a clear quintain. Also, at a poetic device in this poem, 
we see troche. Troche means there is one stressed and one unstressed syllable in a line. Such two loads. So one is stressed, another one is unstressed. Stressed. Diverged. This word only. This word diverged. There is a syllable which is stressed, and another one is not stressed. So we see this one that there are uh, words that are in black or syllables that which are in the black uh, color and the other one are in the blue color that make it make the difference. In this poem, also we see anapests. Uh, the anapests here means that there are two short or unstressed syllable followed by one long or stressed syllable. We look at this one now. Uh, two lord diverged in a yellow wood. Looking at these syllables, we see that this N and A are unstressed, making it, making it an apest. Another uh, poetic device we can see here is poetic uh, is a lime scheme. Lime scheme is arrangement of rhyme in a stanza or a poem. The whole poem follows the A B A A B rhyme scheme. There are four bits per rhyme, employing yambic tetrameter. The lime in this poem, uh, they are not taken, are what we call end lines. Load not taken can be uh, analyzed in a way of lime scheme as follow. We have a wood. Now, when we are making or finding lime scheme, we start with the letter A. Wood here is a word that goes with A, with both, both goes to B. We have stood. Stood sounds like a wood. Now, this stood we have a could sounds like a stood. Now, we shall have uh, the line of a again with undergrowth. Undergrowth sounds like both. Then we have b. So, the line scheme of this first sensor is a b a a b. The second stanza we have fair, so we call it C. There is cream, we call it D. There is where, there is, we call it C. There is there, we call it C. And uh, there is same, which sound like cream, then we call it D. Now, the line scheme of a second stanza is C, D, C, C, D. On the third stanza, we have Ray. So this lay we shall call it E. Black, we call it F. Day, say, sound like lay, then we call it E. There is way, way sound like day, we call it E. Back, sound like black, we call it F. Then this make the third stanza sound in this part, uh, line scheme of E, F, E, E, F. The fourth stanza, we have Psi, we have Hence. Now, this Psi, we shall call it G, Hence. We shall call it I. There is I also sound like Psi, we call it G. There is By, By sounds like Psi and I, we shall call it G. And difference sound like Hence, we call it I. Now, the line scheme of this fourth stanza will be G, I, G, G, I. Another one is the assonance. Uh, in this poem, there is repetition of all sound in the word load and yellow. This makes it assonance because there is sound O which make it assonance. We have also symbolism. So now the poet has used symbolism of the Lord to present 
the journey of life and decision we make on that journey. Another one is the consonants. The consonants here we have the repetition of D, any load, diverged, and wood. We have a TH on both and that. We also have F at first and only four. We also have again W only how and way. This make it consonants. We have another one called anaphora. In the anaphora, we have the repetition of end at the beginning of second line, third line, and the fourth line. So this one make it anaphora. We have enjambment. So on line uh, three, four, and five, there is continuous from without punctuation mark that make it also enjambment. We also have a metaphor. Uh, a poet has used the metaphor for the choice we make in life. So here he has used the Lord. The Lord, the word Lord here is used as a metaphoric poetic device. The word undergrowth stands for the future into which the poet cannot see. We have imagery. This imagery is a, a poetic device in which a poet used to create a, a mantle, picture in the mind of leader. So here, the poet or a writer has to use five senses. So here, we have to remember that there is a nose which a, a, an audience or a leader, even a listener, can smell. There is a test. So, testing, hearing, touching, and sight. Here, using eyes. The poet has used a sense of sight where he used leaves and yellow wood. I think everybody know, knows leaves. And when one says yellow wood, we shall understand or visualize, make a picture in our mind of leaves and these yellow woods. We have personification as another poetic device. This personification is giving human attribute to non-human things. Now, the poet has personified the Lord where he said that because it was grassy and wanted to wear. So now you can ask yourself how Lord need to wear. Is it? Is the Lord a human being so that it need to wear clothes? So this giving human characteristic to Lord is what you call personification. Another one is a poetic device called simile. A simile is a, a de poetic device which compares two unlike things by using word like and as. In this poem, we have a, a simile on the second stanza where he said, as just as fair. So it shows how the poet has linked the Lord less taken to the easy way through life. Okay, thank you guys for watching this video up to the very end. I wish you watch this video not once but a couple of times because space repetition enhances retention.